You know, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you have to know that no one in Paris believed that you would be in person. They all said, no, nah, he's not come, going to come. He was uh, already at Versailles for Choose France, so he's not going to come, and it will be a video. So is it real? Are you real? I'm a hologram. Ah, then. This is a hologram. Or an android. <laughs> Elon, it is uh, a pleasure and an honor to have you. So thank you for making uh, the trip. I know that this has not been very easy. And I know also that uh, for the first time in my life, I will interview somebody who is introvert. Uh, yes. Yes, you told me. I started out that way. Yeah, shy and introvert. Fine. So, uh, I'm asking the audience to be uh, a little bit gentle with Elon because uh, he's so shy yeah. that he needs your support. And on top of that... <laughs> on top of that, he's speaking in front of his mother. So, you can imagine uh, okay. how difficult it is. <laughs> May, stand up. Yeah! So, as you have seen, since uh, we have uh, announced your participation, it has been quite uh, uh, something because everyone wanted to be here. So we had to change uh, we had a very modest room with okay. uh, only 1,500 people. Okay. And we had to move here. And you have to know that the Dome de Paris is the place where there is the musicals. Yeah. So we are not expecting you to sing or to dance. But Good. if you can do it, we would be very happy. Yeah! yeah. Uh, but you have also to know that this is the room where Steve Jobs was coming every time he was doing a keynote or presenting new product, it was here. Okay. So I hope that you like the symbol. Sure. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you, you don't need any introduction. Uh, your name is uh, a, a brand. It's already okay. a brand. It's a I brand mean, uh, for, yeah, for, for innovation, uh, for ambition, for... A perfume? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. This is uh, the agreement that you uh, made with yeah. uh, the Arno family a few hours yeah. ago. I mean, it's, it, I mean, really, it brands itself. Yeah. <laughs> and you are the origin of PayPal, Tesla, SpaceX, to name a few, and even OpenAI. So... Yeah. You love taking risks, and um, you are going always against the tide and uh, the popular wisdom. You have been always proven right. Now there is al almost. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> almost. almost uh, yes. Now there is a bet of uh, the. 44 billion US dollar question, which is, will you still be right with Twitter? Sure. Uh, uh, so. It was expensive. Yeah. yeah you agree? <laughs> I don't know yeah. if, um, you know, if, if, listen, if I'm so smart, why did I pay so much for Twitter then? Really? <laughs> 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 So, as I'm not a journalist, I'm not trying to get headlines and to have provocative uh, uh, response and to, to make a scoop. But nevertheless, if you wish to do that, it is authorized. Okay, great. So, we are expecting that you will uh, really make the show because everyone comes here to see you, to listen to you, and to 
uh, get uh, some of the magic that you have. All right. Well, but, I'm, 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 honor I'm honored that you all went to listen to what I have to say. It's uh, great to, to see the crowd, and uh, I don't know, you guys seem awesome, so. <laughs> but you told me that you would like, you said that you would like to speak in French. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Zut alors. <laughs> Bonjour Paris. Bonjour Paris. <laughs> So <laughs> there are some people who believe that you are a genius, and there are, there are some who, are, who believe that you are evil. So well, we, I mean, you can be both. You, we, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could be an evil genius. That's yeah. not, uh, you know. So you will tell us what you are, or you will let the people uh, <laughs> draw their own conclusion? Um, uh, I am um, definitely not evil. What's <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> tell me. <laughs> What? <laughs> what, what is the thing that you have ahead of your... Uh, yes, yeah, so if, you, if you look carefully, you can see an angel's halo on my head <laughs> and the wings. Uh, it's uh, subtle, but... Uh, uh, where are yeah. the wings? Yeah, they're, so, they're difficult to see, but if you look carefully, you know, they're right there. Yeah, yeah um, small wings. Yes. Um, so, yeah, hopefully not evil. Aspirationally not evil. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so that wasn't uh, convincing. <laughs> Elon, you, you have done a lot of operation. You have created a lot of companies. The most important question for everyone is: What the hell is driving you? Why are you so obsessed by new operation, new creation, new things to do? Yeah, it, uh, crystal meth is the answer. Um, <laughs> If you think Red Bull gives you wings, um, so <laughs> man, that that that's, that that quote's gonna probably sting. Um, so um, yeah, just kidding for the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, I think there's in, in, the companies still have a lot to do for their their core mission. Um, the you know for electric vehicles, sustainable energy. Uh, still less than 1% of the global fleet is electric. So you've got about 2 billion cars and trucks on the road, but still uh, less than uh, 20 million are electric at this point. So there's still a long way to go for sustainable energy, for um, sustainable energy generation. So this, you know, the Tesla mission, I think we've, we've made a, a lot of progress, but still um, it's a lot, a lot more ahead. Um, then SpaceX, the goal is, uh, it's, a, it's a big goal, but it's, we, we want to try to uh, make life multiplanetary, to extend life beyond Earth. And um, I think this is important for a number of reasons, uh, but um, yeah, there's, there's the sort of defensive reason of ensuring that the light of consciousness does not go out. Um, and, and if I, I may, some of these questions, I, if, if I'm going on too long, you feel free to interrupt me, but the- No, no, you can. Okay. You can't so, be long. Okay, so, um, you know, pe people do ask me, you know, uh, have I seen UFOs uh, and aliens and that kind of thing? And um, I haven't. Um, and I think I would have seen them by now. Um, so it, it appears that we might, there's, we might be the only consciousness, uh, at least in this galaxy. And, um, and if so, that's kind of a scary prospect because... Uh, it, it means that the light of consciousness is like a, like a tiny candle in a vast darkness. And uh, we should do everything we can to prevent that candle from going out. So, yeah. And, and, and so, so some of the things, so that means obviously taking the actions to ensure that Earth is good, that Earth is safe and secure for civilization. Um, and it, I think it also means ex, ex, extending life beyond Earth um, to other planets in the solar system and ultimately to other star systems. Um, and I think that's, that's both a sort of defense of the light of consciousness and also, um, I think, a point of inspiration because the, the, life cannot just be about solving um, one problem after another. We need things that inspire us. 
I mean, we need things that you know, move our hearts. And that when you wake up in the morning, you're excited to be alive. And being a space-bearing civilization and making true the things that we see in the good science fiction movies, this is one of the things that I think can inspire all of humanity. Just like the, you know, when, when the um, astronauts went to the moon in 69, it was something that, I mean, they said for all mankind, you know, and it really was something you say to any human on Earth, what's, the, what is, what's like the most amazing thing that humanity has ever done? A lot of, at least one of those things would be we went to the moon, you know? And so you want to have these inspiring things that make you excited to be alive and excited about the future. Um, yeah. And you, you had those uh, thoughts and dreams uh, when you were a kid or this came uh, much later on? Well, I didn't think I would be doing these things as a kid, um, that's for sure. I was interested in technology and I read a lot of books. Um, so I was obviously interested in science. I mean, this is, not, this is hardly going to be surprising. I was interested in science fiction and technology. You have to tell the truth because there is someone <laughs> yeah. who is listening to you. Huh? Yeah, my mom's right there. She can, <laughs> she can call me out on this if it's not, not accurate. But um, so I, I guess the, the thing that was maybe um, most significant from a philosophical standpoint was that uh, when I was about maybe 12 or 13, I had somewhat of an existential crisis where I was like, I was like what, what is the meaning of life? Is life just meaningless? Why are we here? What does it all mean? And, um, and I read a lot of books on religion and philosophy. And, um, and then ultimately, the, you know, I read this book, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is great. Um, and in that book, that book is really a, a, a philosophy book that's disguised as humor. And the point that Douglas Adams makes is that the, the real difficulty is understanding what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. Um, and that, we, we, that, that really we want to, we want to have, it's, it's, it's essentially, a, it's, it's like a philosophy of curiosity. Um, of, of saying, well, what can we do to find out more about the, the nature of the universe and, um, and the meaning of life? And so if, 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 that's, that's the sort of foundational element. And then from there you say, okay, well, if we want to find out the meaning of life, we have to expand the scope and scale of consciousness. We have to go out there and we ex explore the stars to, to know what questions to ask um, about the universe and, and understand the universe. And that's that's my core philosophy. Um, and, and, and so from that, it was like, well, we have to make sure that uh, Earth is good, so we have to have sustainable energy. Um, we um, we want to build technology to travel beyond Earth. And uh, that's, it's, it's from that sort of core philosophy that these companies uh, arise in, in most cases. Um, now you can say, how does Twitter help with that? <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to go back to Earth. Sure. And uh, to the various uh, enterprises that you contributed to create or co-created or created. Let's start with PayPal. Sure. A very impressive company. Do you regret to have sold it? Um, I, I think in, in retrospect, I think it was it was good to have that, that the company was acquired by eBay um, because th there was so much talent at PayPal and that talent subsequently went on to create many other companies. Um, so uh, YouTube, for example, was created by two people that worked at, at PayPal. Um, uh, we had, there was uh, LinkedIn was created from, from PayPal. There was uh, Yelp. There was uh, m many other companies. Um, Impressive. Yeah. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, so, and then and if, if I'd been still working on PayPal, then I, there wouldn't be, you know, t Tesla would not be in its current form and, and SpaceX wouldn't exist. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I guess the sh short answer, yes. <laughs> yeah, the short answer is that, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but now with the, 
you would have loved to keep it again? Well, there is, I think, um, the potential to do something that is um, uh, bigger than PayPal. Um, this is sort of like the X, the sort of everything app kind of thing. So I, I think it, it's, it's somewhat poetic. Like we're trying to get, go, go finish a task that was started about 24 years ago. Um, I think it's. I think we, it's going to be useful. X slash Twitter is going to be just a very useful thing, um, and hopefully something that is a positive force for civilization. Uh, moving to Tesla, uh, I have um, through one of our operation done the first advertising campaign for the electric car of GM. That was at the end of the 90s. So can okay. you explain why GM and other car manufacturers have not created Tesla and why Tesla is successful? Uh, what is the difference? Um, you're talking about the EV1, basically. The EV1 car that... So uh, General Motors um, actually did come out with this uh, electric vehicle one, EV1. And it's, uh, yes, you remember, EV1. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, so I, I thought when that it came out... It was 97. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, I, would have, I expected there would be an EV2, EV3, and so forth. And if, if they had done that, actually, there would be no need for Tesla. Um, but um, for reasons that, that aren't clear, they, GM uh, recalled all of the EV1s, even from customers that really wanted to keep the cars. They recalled the cars, and they crushed them in a junkyard. And the, the, it, it, blows, it, it still blows my mind that they did this, because the, the, the people who had the EV1s, they loved the car so much, they held a candlelit vigil at the junkyard where the cars were crushed. Okay, like it was... Like, like someone is getting killed, <laughs> you know, like... And it's, and it's like, if somebody is holding a candlelit vigil for the because they love your product so much, maybe you should make more of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's like pretty rare for candlelit vigils to be held for products. So I, I don't understand why they didn't do more. They should have, and they would be the leader in electric vehicles today. But they didn't. They, they didn't. And so there was a need for Tesla because the, you know, at the time of starting Tesla, there were no electric vehicles being made. Um, and there were, so the big car companies were not making electric vehicles. There, there were no startups that we were aware of making electric vehicles. So it's like, well, we should try. And um, I mean, in the case of both Tesla and SpaceX, I thought the chance of success was maybe 10%. So I just felt like I thought it would be successful. I thought it would fail. Hey. Good lesson. Uh, now moving to the kid's dream, which is to become an astronaut and not to build rockets. How you move from the idea that every child has, I would be an astronaut, to I will do reusable rockets. Yeah. Um. You forgot. No, I, I'm trying to comp compress the stories so that they're not too long, um, because the story is actually quite long. Because I didn't start out wanting to do the rockets. I, at first, I was going to do this um, philanthropic mission to Mars called Mars Oasis. And then as I started investigating um, the, what it would take to launch this mission to Mars, just a little greenhouse, basically, um, it was intended to inspire the public. And, and I, I started understanding more about the, the, what rockets could be used. Um, I actually went to Russia a few times to um, try to buy some of their nuclear missiles, um, minus the nuclear, minus the nuke. Um, that's extra. Um, so that was pretty wild, being in, in Russia in 2001, uh, negotiating to buy two of their biggest missiles. Um, but 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 it became it became clear that the um, 
And unless there was a, something new with rockets, there were, that, 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 that was the fundamental issue. The cost of access to space was the fundamental issue. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a question of trying to increase the public's desire. Public's desire for space and exploration is very high. Uh, but there needs to be a, a means. There, there needs to be a way. Um, and uh, there, need, there needs to be a radical improvement in the cost of access to orbit. Um, so I was like, OK, well, I'm going to try starting a rocket company and see if it's successful. But I, like I said, I, I told people at the time, because people would say to me, Let's tell me this joke of like, what's the fast, what, you know, what, what's the, you know, how, how, how do you go from, uh, <clears throat> sorry, um, it, sorry, I'm getting a, a little hot under the collar here. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people are. Um, so uh, they would say, what, what, what's the fastest way to make a, a small fortune in the rocket industry? And the, and the punchline is, you start with a large one. So. Anyway, it was, it was uh, tough going for a while. Our first three launches failed. Fortunately, the fourth one succeeded. If the fourth one had not succeeded, uh, SpaceX would not exist. So it was a very close call. Fast forward. You created, uh, or you co-created OpenAI. Yes. Uh, ChatGPT has been incredibly, success incredibly successful. It's uh, the the, the fastest growing ever story. And uh, after having created OpenAI, suddenly you say, oh, oh, we should have a pause. Some people say, oh, it's because he has not done it. Well, I, I mean, I didn't think anyone would actually agree to the pause. Um, but I thought, just for the, for the record, I just want to say, I think we should pause. Um, I didn't think that, uh, anyway, that the... Why do you want to shoot pose? Well, I think th there's, there's a real danger for digital superintelligence uh, having negative consequences. And so if we are not careful with creating artificial general intelligence, uh, we could have potentially a catastrophic outcome. So. No, I think there's a range of possibilities. I think the most likely outcome is positive for AI. But, it, but that's not every possible outcome. So we, we need to minimize the probability that something will go wrong with um, digital superintelligence. Um, yes. Um, so I'm in favor of AI regulation because I think advanced AI is a risk to the public. And anything that's a risk to the public, there needs to be some kind of referee that referee is the regulator. And so I think that, uh, that my strong recommendation is to have some regulation for AI. Some regulation for AI? Yes. Which is what you want also for Twitter? Um, not sure. Regulation, I guess. There's plenty of, plenty of regulators. Sure. OK. Uh, so speaking about Twitter, uh, you, you have uh, made a big bet. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter. You said it a few minutes ago that you paid too much. Yes. Yes. Uh, and um, you are now going on to Twitter 2.0 mm -hmm. or 3.0, uh, which I understand it's a full scale reinvention of the company. Uh, yeah, we're, we're so, evolving uh, the company very rapidly. The, the company is changing quite dramatically. There are a lot of uh, controversy uh, about uh, Twitter. So I, I have, uh, in fact, three very quick questions. The first one is, why have you decided to acquire it? The second is, uh, what was wrong at Twitter to make you acting? And the last one is um, not, not the last, last of the three, because there are many other questions, is why do you believe that you would be successful? Uh, and you will be. Huh, well, thanks. Um, I, can imagine, I can't imagine that you are, will not be. Well, thanks. Um, so, well, obviously, I was <clears throat> on Twitter as a, as a major user. And uh, even before the acquisition, um, closed. My my Twitter account was the most interacted with account in the world. So, my 
I guess I'll be, I'm pretty closely attuned to what's going on with Twitter. You know, I, I get a feel for how is it shifting one way or the other. And uh, generally, I was concerned that Twitter was having a negative effect on civilization, that it was having a corrosive effect on civil society. And, um, and so that, you know, anything that undermines uh, civilization, I think, is not good. And you know, go back to my point of like we need to do everything possible to support civilization and move it in a positive direction. And um, and I felt that it would that Twitter was kept moving more and more in a negative direction. And my hope and aspiration was to change that um, and have it be a positive force for civilization. It is not perceived like this. Okay. People are very happy to listen to that uh, approach, but it, it, the perception is very different. Well, I think it depends on, I mean, I think if, if somebody is a regular Twitter user, I think they, most people would say that their, their experience has improved. Um, we've we've uh, gotten rid of 90% um, uh, of the bots and the scams and, and, and the various bad things that were happening. Um, we've uh, gotten rid of now at this point, I think 95% of the child exploitation material that was on Twitter, which was a shock to see the, the amount of that, that was really terrible. Uh, some of that uh, had been going on for 10 years and no action. So uh, I think we've done a lot of good in that respect. Um, and, um, and then I think we, you know, we've also done things like we, we have open sourced the algorithm. So we're trying to be as transparent as possible. So Twitter is the only social media company where you can see the actual code of the algorithm. So it's not like some secret black box. Um, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the way to build trust is, the way to build trust is not take my word for it, it's let's, let's show you exactly how it works and full transparency. Um, and, um, and, and we're also going to be showing, like, if, if your account is in any way affected by the Twitter system, you can see it clearly. Um, and uh, just, you know, moving in, a, a, I think, a good direction. Um, we've, I think the recommendation algorithm, anyway, I, I don't want to go on too long for Twitter, but I think it's, I, th I think it's actually uh, quite good and that those who are, on the, who are on the Twitter system, I think, generally think it's good. Um, the, you know, we are seeing all-time highs in, in usage. So at least, you know, for the public out there, they are using the system more. Um, so we're seeing a pretty significant week-over-week -week growth in, in usage. Um, so, the, you know, the public is speaking with their time, and if they're, if they're putting their time on, on Twitter, that's a very good signal. Um, so that, that's, that's very positive. Um, what, what yeah. would you say to advertisers who left Twitter uh, to convince them to come back? Yeah, I, actually I should say that um, maybe with a few exceptions, um, almost all the advertisers have said that they're, they've either come back or they said they will come back. So actually, uh, I feel pretty, pretty optimistic about the future. Um, and um, yeah, so it, it, you know, we're really, at this point, I believe, uh, actually, I'm not aware of any advertiser that is, uh, that either, they've either come back or they said they'll come back. I'm not aware of any exceptions. There are probably a few exceptions, but overall, I think it's, uh, it's very positive. Good. So we will have now a broader conversation. We will ask uh, uh, Christelle Edeman from uh, uh, Orange, the CEO of Orange, to join us, as well as... Uh, Antoine Arnaud from LVMH and uh, Asmita Dubé from uh, uh, L'Oréal. We have to move in order okay. that they add right. the chairs. So come here. It's okay. Now, while, Elon, while they are arranging, there is a. Uh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, there is one question yeah. that I would like uh, to <laughs> take care.
So finally, we are all together all again. Right. Uh, so uh, I, I had another question, but I will save it for later. And uh, I will give the floor to Christelle. Christelle Edeman, who is the uh, CEO of Orange. And uh, she is uh, very much excited about putting some uh, harsh, difficult question to you. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But this, this, um, so I like to talk about obviously social networks and, <laughs> and I was I mean, Twitter. destroyed by her what you just said with, yeah. with uh, Maurice, but uh, obviously social networks and Twitter has been a fantastic tool to develop free speech and open debates that maybe were not possible before that. Sure. Now, there's also another side of it, which is that there can be some disinformation, fake news, for fake, fake news, what? That's crazy. Fake news, yes. <laughs> believe it or not. I don't believe you it. You believe that? Wait, it how do I know this is real? This is not. <laughs> now the question is, and, and actually I think there's a flip side indeed to social networks, and there's a code of conduct that the EU has proposed about yeah. disinformation, okay. and recently Twitter just decided to walk away from it. So is this um, because Twitter doesn't I mean, respect the fact that information needs to be moderated, and actually you've been pretty vocal on uh, content moderation. So just, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I'm generally a fan of um, that we should have uh, free speech um, as much as possible, as much as is allowed by the laws of any country. So, um, you know, I think that, if, you know, say, for France, we should um, allow things that are allowed by law. Um, and if the people are, want the laws to be different, then pass a different law and we'll adhere to that law. But, but for, for Twitter to go beyond the law, that, you know, that doesn't seem quite right to me. I, I think we want to allow the people to express themselves. Um, and, and, and really, if you have to say, when does free speech matter? Uh, free speech matters, uh, and it's only relevant, if, if people are allowed to say things that you don't like, because otherwise it's not free speech. Um, and and I, would, I would take that if, if somebody says something, you know, potentially offensive, but that's, that's actually okay. Now, now we're not, we're not going to promote those, you know, offensive uh, tweets, but, uh, but I think people should be able to say things because the alternative is censorship and then and frankly, I think if you go down the censorship route, it's only a matter of time before censorship is turned upon you. Um, and, and, the, and then the, so that, that's why it's important, um, you know, for in the U.S. you've got the First Amendment, uh, Freedom of Speech Amendment, and you say, like, why did they do that? It's because, why did they pass that amendment? It was because they, they were not able to say what they wanted to say in the countries that they came from. And they wanted to make sure that they could say what they wanted to say. So I, I believe in freedom for the people uh, to say things, um, and that even if somebody said it, that, that it's actually in some ways a sign of health if people are able to, if someone you don't like is able to say something you don't like, rather than try to suppress that, you say like, you know what, that's a good sign because that means I can say things and that person will not like what I say, but I can still say it. And that's a really big deal. I mean, freedom of speech, that's something that's very, I mean, at the core of our values. But now, if we look at young people and being in the digital field, and we provide digital services that people use, there's also a move towards cyberbullying and harassment, which I think we all, it's also our role to educate young people on mm -hmm. how to use the technology and make sure that because some behaviors, I mean, on Twitter or other social networks, yes. can actually have devastating effects on, on people. Uh, uh, is Twitter doing something about it, or would you be willing to engage with other players? Actually, at Orange, we do a lot in that space. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, that's true. I think I think you know, Twitter is for sure willing to engage with others, um, and like, as I said, the, the overarching goal is to have Twitter be a force a positive force for civilization. And, um, 
you know, so, and, 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 it, and, and if, if you're on the platform and you're being harassed or bullied or whatever, obviously that's a negative experience. Um, so, um, so, you know, what we're doing is, it's, we, we call it sort of freedom of speech but not freedom of reach, uh, which is that if you, yes, you can say offensive things, but then your content is going to get downrated. <laughs> so, if you're a jerk, your, your reach will drop. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the right thing. Um, Antoine, I don't know if you will be competing with L'Oréal to launch the future fragrance uh, for <laughs> Elon Musk and uh, the brand, the Musk, so you have to compete very hard. Yeah. But maybe, uh, you, you, I, I know that you had already the lunch, uh, but uh, there is now the dessert, so you can put your question. All right. Um, first of all, in the name of um, Le Groupe Les Echos Le Parisien, thank you very much for being here. Uh, yeah. This group is a co-host of VivaTech, and it's, uh, it's great to, to have you, and welcome. I like it. Uh, so, it. Cha change of uh, subject uh, from Twitter. Um, at LVMH, our oldest maison is called Clos de Lambre. I saw you enjoyed good wine. Yeah. Um, it's 650 years old. Wow. Louis Vuitton was founded in 1854. Our most ancient American maison, Tiffany, was founded in 1837. The sum of the years of existence of all our maisons at LVMH is 8,393 years old. Wow. Tesla is a teenager, right? Yes, yes. 19, 19 years old. Yeah. And its market cap is already higher than LVMH. So it's not a question of age. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so, first question. First question. How much longer are you going to make us look so bad? <laughs> <laughs> Second question, more serious. Do you feel the creation of value is more challenging in traditional or innovative business? <laughs> well, first of all, it's an honor to be here and, and uh, speak with you. So, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, evaluations are, are a strange thing because. Um, you know, sometimes I've said, hey, I think the stock price is too high at Tesla, and then the stock price goes up. I'm like, okay. Um, so if you, you tweet, is it going up or down? No, the crazy thing, <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, when I've tweeted, I think the stock price is too high, almost always it goes up. So, I don't know, it's, it's a strange thing. So, I, I guess in the, in the case of Tesla, if, if the, 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 the really, the, the value of the company is primarily uh, on the basis of autonomy, so uh, in, in my opinion, um, because if you look at our total vehicle output, it's um, you know it'll be almost two million vehicles this this year or something like that. Um, but that's that's still only two percent of total vehicle production. So then, why is our market cap so high? And it's because the potential for autonomy um, is uh, that the, the value of autonomy is so high. Um, that even, even if you have a discounted percentage probability of autonomy happening, um, that is still incredibly valuable. Um, so the average passenger car is uh, used only about 10 hours a week, so an average of about one and a half hours a day. But if you have an autonomous robo-taxi, the utility is, might be 50 or 60 hours a week out of 168 hours. So now you've got a vehicle that costs the same but has five times the utility. So it's so gigantic a change that that's really, I think, uh, the main driver of our value. Um, and uh, although I've said this before, I think we will solve autonomy soon. <laughs> did, did you expect that uh, Tesla will be at this level of market cap? Uh, no, I did not expect Tesla would be at this level of market cap. Because it's just extraordinary, uh, yeah. unfair, I, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I don't set the price, so... Yeah, <laughs> you don't set. <laughs> Maybe just a, another quick question. Um, I tried Mid Journey the other day. Yeah, Mid Journey's, Mid -Journey's amazing. Right, and, and I asked the, the software to make a Louis Vuitton advertising campaign with only two words. So here it's a bad question for you, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> if, if, you are, if you want to put me out of a job... <laughs> that was my question. Do you feel this advertising production industry is going to be threatened by AI. Uh, be careful. 
Be not, careful. Not at all. <laughs> it's totally safe. <laughs> I mean, AI is definitely going to be a massive disruptive force. I mean, it, AI is probably the, the most disruptive technology ever. Um, I mean, the crazy thing is that, you know, the, the advantage that humans have is that uh, we're smarter than other creatures. Like, if we got into a fight with a gorilla, the gorilla would definitely win. Um, but we're smart, so... But now, for the first time, there's going to be something that is smarter than the smartest human. Like, way smarter than the smartest human. And uh, as you can see from the journey, the art that AI can create is incredible. It's so beautiful. And it does it, you know, within seconds. So, we're at... I mean, I think... You know, there's that sort of saying, uh, may you live in interesting times, which I think is like not exactly a good thing sometimes, uh, but, but would we actually live, I think we live in the most interesting of times. Um, the advent of AI, and I actually thought to myself at one point, like, uh, should, you know, do I would I really want to be alive at this point? Like, let's say that there is some AI Armageddon um, that happens, some sort of AI apocalypse. I think I would still be, want to be alive at this time to see it. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, hopefully not, not create, cause it. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's just a, I think we live in an, an extremely interesting time, you know. Because um, the things that you see AI being able to do now, it's going to do much more with each passing year. Um, cars will absolutely drive themselves better than any person could drive. Um, we'll have humanoid robots. Um, like, so te Tesla's developing a humanoid robot. Um, we call it the T-800. It's a, uh, yeah, some people get that joke. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> it's a Terminator. Um, so we can tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but but if, if, you, if you like to say, what is, an, what is an economy? An economy is GDP per capita times capita. Now, what happens if you don't actually have a limit on capita? If you, if, if you have an unlimited number of uh, sort of people or robots, um, it's, not, it's not clear what meaning an economy has at that point because you, ha you have an unlimited economy, effectively. Um, so, so, like, on the good side, the, the plus side of AI is that I think we are heading for an age of abundance um, where any goods and services that you want, you can just have. Um, so that's the that's the that's the the, the positive side of, of of AI future is an age of abundance. From the advertising side, I must say that we are using AI since many years, and it is helping us a great deal. And uh, this tool that we are already using, and I think it will be helping us to do even faster some very good ad. It will be probably long time before they replace the creative minds. Uh, Asmita, maybe you have an opinion on that, and maybe you can... Asmita is the CDO of L'Oréal, and uh, she, she knows a lot about uh, digital, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, advertising and AI, and put your question to Elon. Yeah. So I'll pick up from advertising and from what you said before about Twitter. So now we know that Twitter is expensive and we know that it aims to have free speech. The question I have is about winning the advertiser's trust to be a preferred social media platform in the current context where the expected revenue you know, in 2023 is lower than 2022. You have brought in new leadership, Linda. So I wanted to know that uh, how will we win that trust and will Linda have the time, the support, the freedom, because she's an advertising expert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so will she be able to manage the situation and how? Yeah, I, 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 think, uh, I think Linda's great. Um, so I think Linda's going to do uh, amazing things for, for Twitter um, and obviously um, understands where advertisers are coming from very deeply, uh, understands uh, the concerns that advertisers have, and I think will do a great job in addressing those concerns. Um, you know, the, the, a key part is, um, you know, say like, if, if you're an advertiser, what content do you want to appear next to? 
Um, and depending upon what advertiser, you know, the sensitivity of the brand, um, if you're, for example, uh, say Disney and you're advertising a children's movie, then you want to have, you know, all ages content, you know. Um, and by the way, Disney is one of our biggest advertisers. So, um, so, so, we, so we, it's really about just making sure that the content adjacency matches uh, what a brand is comfortable with. Um, and, and then there's some cases where the, the content is like, you know, there's not going to be any advertising because nobody wants to advertise next to it. And that's going to be some of the more controversial stuff. Um, yeah. I have a follow-up on that, you know, because we were talking about content. You have just made the announcement that there will be ad revenue sharing for creators. Yes. Yeah? And that has a condition it will be done when they are verified blue tick creators and the advertising is to verified blue tick users. Yes. Now, if with that, how, how does that impact your focus on subscription revenues? Because to be blue tick, uh, you know, there's a subscription versus advertising revenues focus. Yeah, so a, a big part of, like, when you say, like, say, how many impressions does something get? Uh, you say, like, well, were those impressions real or not real? You know, was it, uh, you know, a computer just running 100,000 fake accounts, because that obviously doesn't count because the computer's not going to buy anything. Um, so that's why our focus is on, on verified users, because in, 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 we are admittedly conflating verification and subscription uh, at, at Twitter. So you could say, like, verified subscriber or something like that. That's not po it's not possible to game that. So you know it's real, you know it's solid, and you know it's not a computer. Um, so that's why it's it, that, that's why we're, we're, we're focused on that um, is, is to ensure the authenticity of the views and that it, it really uh, that pe real people are seeing uh, what's going on. I mean, the sheer amount of, of bot and scam and spam activity in social media is insane. Um, and we're talking about AI. It's very obvious that, especially with today's AI, uh, the computers can pass every like are you a human test. In fact, I think they can pass all your human tests better than a human. <laughs> you know, sort of you say like, identify a traffic light or something like that. Okay, let me tell you, Tesla can identify a traffic light. So if we're, you know, and, and, but even like open source uh, AI stuff right now um, can pass all of the, the human tests. So you have to have something that there's better authentication than, than that, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think that um, confidence and trust is something which we lose fast and that we regain slowly. Uh, I have no doubt, personally, that Twitter will gain back the trust, provided that you do the right thing, and I'm sure that you will do the right thing. So this is uh, uh, something which um, is probably just a hiccup in the time, but you need to do the right thing, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. that uh, uh, you, you, you will do it. I have. Um, two small questions. One so, which is uh, 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 regarding Ukraine. You have uh, helped enormously Ukraine yeah. at the beginning with Starlink. Mm -hmm. And I think we owe you a lot because uh, without uh, access, <laughs> access to internet and without access to communication, the war would have been finished. Uh, what is your take on uh, that experience? Yeah, that, that was a... Uh, I mean, that whole situation is very complex. Um, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, really complex. Um, um, as, as you point out, uh, Starlink did play, play a pivotal role. Um, because uh, Russia had actually taken out all of the satellite communications and all of the ground communications, except for Starlink, it was the only one that was still operating. Um, and, and even today, it is still the only one that is effective at the front lines. And uh, Starlink today is the backbone of the Ukrainian military communications. Um, so, you know, I thought it was important to help out. Um, and, um, but I, but I, I do, I do hope for some kind of resolution soon because I, I think it's, it's, it's terribly sad that, that the flower of 
the youth of Ukraine and Russia, uh, who don't want to be there, um, that they're dying in trenches right now. And I, I sure hope we can figure out some means to peace soon. The last question is going back uh, to this crowd. You have a lot of startups. You have a lot of young people who want to be <laughs> okay. successful. Sure. What are the two or three pieces of advice that you would give them? Well, you have a question over there? Yes. Uh, do we have okay. a microphone? Because Elon has accepted to take questions from the floor. Sure. Charlotte? Allez, un microphone. <laughs> Donnez, allez, allez, prenez-le de l'autre côté. De l'autre côté, allez. Allez, go. You have the mic, you go. Yes. Okay. Um, Hello. I don't know why you got the mic, but please go. Short question. Every single one of your companies would work a lot better on Mars than on Earth. <laughs> like sure. It's really hard to make a big vacuum in, on Earth, but on Mars it's a lot easier. Sure. Same for Tesla, uh, electric cars, obviously all the other ones can yeah. work. Yeah. And I mean, SpaceX is obvious. Um, okay. Yeah. Give the mic uh, back. Yeah, well, me and. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, me and Mars should get a room, basically. <laughs> I, I, I love Mars. <laughs> okay. Huh? No, 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 no. Now I want that you oh, give the I, mic. I, I, I Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, I was there. Okay, sure. What's the question? Uh, what is the question? My name is Nayo, uh, co founder and CEO at ClickUp. We make AI tiny. So Tesla is one of our target. I uh, would love to work with you, Ellen. Uh, and my husband is actually ex Mobili who hard okay. carry like the infrastructure and MLOps. So, okay. Okay, my, sure. Uh, this is my oh! oh! Okay. <laughs> one last question. Last sure. oh, more. <laughs> guys, whatever, yeah. I'm, okay, I'm fine go. With it. However long you want to do it. No, no. <laughs> totally crazy. Uh, Alizy. Yeah. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, Dr. Adi Jabez, I'm um, the head of research um, neuroscience, space neuropsychology lab. Uh, we are um, working uh, on the mental health to help human to go to Mars, actually. Sure, that's great. Well, I, I, think, I think you'd want to have okay. a very good mental health on a trip to Mars. <laughs> uh, make sure everyone's sane, <laughs> because uh, you don't want someone opening at the airlock in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> so I think sanity is very important uh, if you're going to Mars. Donnez au premier rang. Premier rang. Non, attendez, s'il vous plaît, donnez pas le micro comme ça. Ne donnez pas le micro que... Attendez que je vous le donne. Voilà, please. We're just going to des descend into chaos. Uh, 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 <laughs> just a second. Okay, you will get. Okay, Alizy. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. So I'm Nathaniel Ackerman from. Okay, we, 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 I, I think we, we're going to just. It's going to be chaos. Uh, Can you hear me? Mais attendez, si vous voulez que ça se passe, il faut se calmer. Allez-y. <laughs> Hey, great T-shirt. <laughs> Allez-y. Okay. So, Allez um, you talked about uh, the European regulation, Elon, and um, you know that there have been uh, many amendments due to LLM uh, deployment. Do you think, uh, how can we integrate the use and actual use of this LLM in a non-controlled way in the, the, the current discussion 
uh, Can you make it short? Thank you. Uh, Récupérer is, is le like, micro. You're asking about safe, safe, safe LLM uh, use? Okay, just a second. No, please, <laughs> it, it will answer the question. Was it about safe LL safety in LLMs or? Sorry, I didn't hear the whole question. It's like uh, safe application of LLMs or, or what is it? Okay. And, and, and protect from the use, no CQs, no Okay. CQs. It's, uh, sure. I, it's okay. Fine. When the regulation has been created, LLM didn't exist. So, what would be your suggestion regarding regulating LLMs? Well, I, I think more broadly, um, th there should be um, uh, regulatory uh, insight into LLMs and, and really any other uh, form of AI. I mean, there's. I'm not sure, LLM, I, I don't think LLMs are the ultimate um, form of AI. Um, I mean, there's sort of an inside joke on AI of like, who do you think will be the, the American president in 2032? Uh, diffusion uh, or Transformers? <laughs> <laughs> there's an inside joke, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, but that like might be a real, it might be real. Um, so, yeah. So we will have the, just a second, the two latest questions, one here and one in, the, in, in that region. So go ahead. Silence. Vous voulez ou pas? I mean, no, if we don't listen to the question, we will not be able to continue. Well. Um, sure. Um, well, I think generally, I think it's important to focus on something. Uh, so go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I think um, you want to focus on something that you are personally passionate about, that you personally care about. Um, it's very hard to be motivated for a product that you don't really feel strongly about. Um, and it doesn't have to be high tech. It could be in any in any field. It's just it's got to be a product that you feel is, is really needs to be there that that and, and something that you personally love. Um, and I would listen to your instincts on on you know do do you love this product or service? Because um, it's it's kind of impossible to know what do other people love. But if you love it, that's a good sign. Um, and um, and that that could be. Small to large, any kind of any field, it's, it doesn't have to be high tech. But if if you don't love, if you, if you don't really love the product that you're making, if you can't, like a good test would be that you can't wait for this product to be on the market. That if you, and if that's the case, you're you're going in the right direction. Great, uh, no, no. The last question. We have, wow. uh oh, uh oh, we have a friend. Uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> je ne vais pas parler. We hot? have a French <laughs> saying, which is, la vérité sort de la bouche des enfants. Il y en a un ici. No, no, le gamin, oui, oui. Uh, no, no, you, you. No, the kid. <laughs> Ah non, c'est pas vous, c'est le gamin. Le... En français, oh, oh, okay, okay, qui okay. pose ses questions en français. Tu poses ta question en français, on traduira. <rires> non, non, tu poses la question, toi. N'aie pas peur. Il and about the human testing, and he is very excited. When do when you think that we will be able to start uh, testing uh, in our virtual world, Victoria VR? Sure. Well, um, so, so Neuralink is, um, 
<laughs> First of all, I, I want to assure everyone who may be worried about Neuralink that um, you will see uh, Neuralink is going to be a fairly slow process because anything that's done in humans, it's very slow. So sometimes people think that this, this suddenly we're going to be chipping over one's head and then before they know it, everyone's connected to the internet and then we're in trouble um, with your brain. Um, so it's going to happen very slowly. Uh, hopefully later this year we'll do our first uh, human uh, device implantation and this will be for, for someone that has um, sort of tetraplegic, quadriplegic, um, does not have, it has lost the connection from their, their brain to their body. Um, and we, we think we should be able to, that person will be able to uh, communicate uh, as fast as someone who has a fully functional body. Um, so that's going to be a big deal. And we, and we see a path beyond that uh, to actually transfer the signals from the motor cortex of the brain to pass the injury in the spinal cord and actually um, enable someone's body to be used again. So um, essentially shunting the signals past the broken point. So it's going to happen very slowly. Uh, hopefully later this year we'll do our first uh, human uh, device implantation. And this will be for, for someone that has um, sort of tetraplegic, quadriplegic, um, does not have, it has lost the connection from their, their brain to their body. Um, and we, we think we should be able to, that person will be able to uh, communicate uh, as fast as someone who has a fully functional body. Um, so that's going to be a big deal. And we, and we see a path beyond that uh, to actually transfer the signals from the motor cortex of the brain to pass the injury in the spinal cord and actually um, enable someone's body to be used again. So um, essentially shunting the signals past the broken point um, and, uh, and restore potentially full, full body um, use to someone that has uh, completely lost the connection. And I mean, you can imagine like if say Stephen Hawking were alive today, what a profound change that would be. Um, and um, so that's our first application. And uh, if uh, it's, it's looking like that, uh, the first case will be later this year. So, yeah. Fantastic. No, I would like a very, very warm rose of applause to Elon Musk. No, no, no. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. I just want to say, you guys are great. <laughs> you guys are, all, I mean, it's, it's so inspiring Look. to see so much energy and so much positive energy uh, in the room. So, uh, this is uh, very inspiring for the future. <laughs> Merci à vous tous. Thank you. Uh, great, thank you. No, 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 no. Okay. Thank you. We're moving behind. Right. You guys, if I go down this there, it's going to be crazy. This way. <laughs> That's right.